So let us talk about distributed computing. Distributed computing is a field of computer science that studies distributed systems. And a distributed system is a software system in which components located on network computer communicate and coordinate their actions by passing messages. So you have certain computers, they pass messages and communicate. So the components interact with each other in order to achieve some common goal. Uh, three significant characteristics of distributed system are concurrency of components, lack of uh, global clock, and uh, independent failure of components. Now this distributed computing also refer to use of distributed system to solve computational uh, problems because this is actually a distributed computing. So we are referring to computing some problems or uh, you know uh, solving some issues, some problems, computer problems or any other problems. So in distributed computing, a problem is divided into many tasks. A task is there, it is divided into many tasks and each of which is solved by one or more computer. Say this is a computer, this is a computer, this is given to this, this is given to this, this is a computer, this two may be given to one computer, which communicate each other by message passing. Now they also communicate. These systems also communicate. So examples of a distributed system vary from this uh, SOA, uh, you know, service oriented architecture based system to uh, massively multiplayer online games to peer to peer applications because they are talked together. One more thing I would like to highlight this distributed computing is uh, often used in conjunction or uh, you can say it's a cousin of uh, grid computing. Grid computing has a different architecture, different way of how does computing takes place uh, and distributed computing is somewhat different. But they are talked together because they are doing the same job, same, the goal is same. So how it works, a distributed computing architecture consists of very lightweight software agents installed on a number of client systems and one or more dedicated distributed computing management software service. So we have, you have uh, you know, software agents, if this is client, this is client, you have software agents installed on these client and one or more dedicated distributed computing management server. So you have a server which is a distributed computing management server and various software agents are installed on number of client systems. So there may also be requesting clients with software that allows them to submit jobs along with the list of their required resources. How it's working? You are a user. This is the job you want to submit. Say any job. You submit it and these are client machines. This is a network manager and this is the administrator. This is the storage uh, resource manager. So this is an idea that how it actually works. Now distributed computing management server, as I just suggested that this is the major part of uh, our distributed computing. So they take distributed computing request and they divide their large processing task into smaller tasks that can run on individual desktop machines. So sometimes this is done by a requesting system. So they send application packages and some client management software to the ideal uh, or you know free client machine that requests them. So they monitor the status of the job being run by the clients. While uh, distributed computing, as I said, that it is a cousin of your, uh, say, cluster computing, or you say it's a cousin of your other grid computing. So let us see that uh, this distributed and other also, which does the same work, what is the similarity and what uh, differences they have. So as far as this distributed computing network is concerned, the cost is as low as 1% of the supercomputer then much, uh, and it is much le less expensive than the clusters. So you don't need to have any supercomputer. While the supercomputer is huge initial capital outlay with immediate uh, depreciation also, and cluster computing, there is substantial initial capital outlay with immediate depreciation like this. Scalability is unlimited 
you can add you can remove all as many systems as you want here you have a supercomputer you have a super, super this uh, supercomputer scalability is limited in as far as cluster is concerned hardware requirement is minimal enterprise use pc resources already owned while supercomputer requires dedicated supercomputing hardware with space allocation cooling and power of con power considerations while cluster it requires multiple dedicated computers with space allocate allocation cooling and power consideration multiple dedicated computers administrative support only one it staff is enough to manage tens and thousands of member machine from single network management server while supercomputer it intensive intensive cluster is it intensive nodes member computers are not dedicated fully full member computer utility is maintained okay and here supercomputer has to be dedicated cluster the systems has to be dedicated it's not scalable risk of failure is somewhat low supercomputer goes it goes cluster goes it goes and maintenance quite low automatically adjust to the member machine that go offline while supercomputer uh, maintenance high because spare part the lost productive um, productivity downtime time and system administrator time where uh, in cluster also same thing goes evolutions means uh, quite low because self upgrading software network value automatically increases as pcs are added or upgraded the evolutions is high in other two so application characteristics of distributed computing obviously not all applications are suitable for distributed computing this is very important to understand and the closer an application gets to running a real time the less appropriate it is so real time if you want okay there may be a debate on this so even processing tasks that normally take one hour or take uh, two may not derive much benefit in the communication among distributed systems and the constantly changing availability of processing client becomes a bottleneck so instead you should think in terms of tasks that take 2 hours days weeks and months right the types of uh, distributed computing applications like we have uh, financial applications like energy applications there are so many you know for that you have a uh, this client application like say live uh, cluster driver engines there is engines this is how clustering is seen but what essentially i wanted to highlight in this is there are wide variety of applications which are being carried out or may be carried out using distributed computing now security and standard challenges whenever you go to the internet or a network environment you need to talk about security and standard specifically so the major challenge come with increasing scale as as soon as you move outside of a corporate firewall security and standardization challenges become quite significant so most of today's vendor currently specialize in application that stop at the corporate firewall uh, though avaki in particular is taking out the global grid territories i'm just highlighting an example that once you go out of firewall there will be there will be a problem that the problem will be uh, actually at your doorstep so beyond spanning firewall with a single platform lies the challenge of spanning multiple firewalls and platforms which means you need to have a standard advantages economic speed inherent distribution and application reliability we just discussed about that so economics means computer hardness together give a better price performance ratio than mainframes speed is a distributed system may have more total computing power than a mainframe and inherent distribution of applications some applications are inherently distributed like uh, atm banking it has to be distributed only and reliability if one machine crashes the system as a whole can still survive if you have a multiple server machines and multiple storage devices that is the redundancy is there but the disadvantage is complexity lack of experience in designing implementing a distributed system all you know for example which platform to use which language to use network problem with the network underlying a distributed system saturates or goes down then the distributed system will be effectively disabled thus negating most of the advantages of the distributed system security is a major hazard since easy access to data means easy access to secret data as well right the conclusion the advantage of this type of architecture for the right kind of applications are very impressive so the most obvious is the ability to provide access to supercomputer load processing power a better for a fraction of the cost of typical supercomputer thank you so much hope you got a bit idea about distributed computing take care